name is Gary. Um, all today's slides will be provided to you guys at the end of the webinar. Um, I don't want to send you the, the slides beforehand because you know today's theme is games and activities, and I don't want to show you all the answers to the games. So um, at the end of the webinar, I will be providing a link for all of the uh, for my presentation today. So don't worry about that. Um, and information about certificates will be given at the end of the webinar. So thank you guys again for joining and uh, let's get started. All right. So today's agenda. So to begin with, so we're going to be talking about course books and kind of activities that go with them um, or the activities that you can kind of do with the uh, with what you're given with the course book, even if you don't use e for e future course books, um, you know whatever you're using, these are some games that you can always adapt um, to what you're teaching. And some of them might be a bit uh, focused on certain topics, but a lot of them I've tried to find, and some of them I've used myself, where you can adapt them to any subject. All right. So I'm just going to briefly introduce um, e future course books. Um, that's what I'm going to be. Um, using as for examples from uh, all the games today. And then we'll go over games, activities, and more games and activities. So it's kind of my, um, kind of my uh, catalog of games that I've used with my students when I was a teacher as well. So hopefully you can take, even if you can only take uh, one or two games that you can use with your students, um, hopefully there is something that you can uh, take away today. All right. And uh, for those that are on PC, I didn't put the box in, but sometimes you have a hard time finding where to put the camera. Um, for my presentation, the upper right corner, you can put that there. That's the safe zone. Um, there won't be anything blocked or anything by moving the camera up there. So mm -hmm. if you still have that open, feel free to move it up to the upper right. Okay. All right. Okay, let's keep going here. So let's go over the eFuture course books. So we have three main course books. So the first course book we had was Smart English, made in 2013, followed up by Hand in Hand, which came out you know, four years later on 2017. So there's a bit of differences with them. And then recently as well, we, oops, we came out with our newer, newest course book, Let's Smile. Okay, so in a kind of, the Let's Smile kind of takes a little bit from both Smart English and uh, hand in hand. So kind of finding that uh, middle ground when it comes to um, e feature course books. So kind of going over what the, uh, the features are of each series, the components, what they focus on. So Smart English is you know, easy to learn, um, easy to remember. So we tried to make, um, with our first course book, try to make it as simple and easy as possible. So not only for the students to learn, but also for the teachers to teach, right? So we just tried to make um, learning and teaching English for your teachers uh, easy, okay? So that was kind of our main focus there. And then with hand in hand as, uh, you know, teaching practices and, and theories kind of evolved um, over the years, um, especially, you know, with the kind of buzzwords of 21st century skills and getting the students ready to be these, you know, the next uh, generation of learners, I we'll tried to incorporate that into our next course book, Hand in Hand, uh, where it includes more global awareness, you know, getting the students to think outside of their culture, realize what's, you know, on a global scale and out in the world, what, what uh, kind of similarities and differences um, kind of are out there, as well as CLIL. Uh, for those that don't know CLIL, it's a content learning. So it's kind of taking in some of other subjects in school and then kind of adapting into the English classroom. And um, I'll show some examples of that, as well as the 21st century skills. Um, do you guys know what the 21st century skills are? The four C's. Any ideas? So here's a kind of first question quiz to you guys. If you've been to some of eFutures webinars before, you might have gone over some of these before. Any idea what the four C's are? So if you know them, you can write them in the chat. Collaboration, very good. That's one of them. Creativity, that's the second one. 
So we have someone that wrote all four down, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. Wonderful. Yeah, so those four things we try to also develop for our students in hand in hand as well. And then with Let's Smile, we kind of take a little bit of both, right? So we do try to link everything in here. And some of these words you can kind of see um, kind of go together with both uh, Smart English and Hand in Hand. So we have the targets being linked and recycled, right? So with easy to remember, you know, from Smart English, we try to get the students to, you know, repetitively or continually use and build upon all of the uh, language targets that they've learned throughout the, throughout the series, right? And then language targets are linked to school subjects. So this is kind of similar to content learning. So we're trying to do this, you know, through that, and then as well as linked to the world. And in Let's Smile, the world um, kind of has a different meaning. Um, you know, hand in hand, we think of globally, uh, let's now we think of more like in our world around us, right? So what we immediately see. And this kind of includes the, the global awareness as well, okay? So I'll kind of quickly go through here. So here are the levels of each. So they're all kind of same, uh, similar levels. So hand in hand kind of finishes higher up on the scale, whereas let's smile, you know, it has kind of the similar content of hand in hand, but has the kind of difficulty level of smart English, right? So that's why I was talking about trying to find that middle ground uh, with Let's Smile. And then these are the kind of uh, components um, that we, we have available. So student book, workbook, you know, teacher's manual, which has a lot of resources um, that you can use for games, for activities, you know, in your teacher's manual, there's a lot of ideas itself in the teacher's manual uh, most of the time as well as flashcards and additional online support. Okay. So kind of just want to go through a simple walkthrough. So these are the pages that, uh, you know, when we look at these pages and then kind of talk about what games and activities we can do through these pages, right? So most of the kind of, um, most of the lesson of flow is going to be the same across each series uh, with slight differences between them. So here, you know, in Smart English, we have kind of the uh, preview of the language um, with the students practicing some listening, kind of the introduction um, at the beginning, and then getting the students to kind of practice the vocabulary and the key targets. And then a bit more practice again, listen and chant, getting the students, you know, practice a little bit of the fluency, ask and answer, and then a bit more of activities to um, to kind of uh, produce the, uh, the targets, right? And then we have, this would be the review unit. So just a simple review with the comic strips and different activities um, for the students. And then we have the kind of the follow-ups uh, for Smart English here with some uh, listen and sing and then read and do um, to kind of, uh, again, just kind of additional practice for the students, okay? And with hand in hand, it's similar. Um, so in the beginning, we do have again still the introduction to the language, and then we have a bit more practice. So here, the the song is moved up a little bit in the lesson flow, and then we go into the, the targets, kind of moving in here. So we have a little bit more on here with the additional practice, and then we try to promote a bit more communication practice. So act and uh, ask and answer kind of things. And then here, this is an example of the kind of global awareness uh, for the students, um, kind of looking at you know, other countries' flags and colors, kind of tying them in to um, the targets, and then kind of unit link. So we talked about linking and recycling. So the, we do that across um, the uh, various units, which are kind of signaled here. Okay. And then the CLIL, so here we'll tell you which one here. So social studies, and you know, still tying it in to uh, what the students learned. Okay. And then we have Let's Smile. So Let's Smile here, kind of just go into, so if you noticed in the previous, uh, previous course books, we had more dialogue in here. So in the beginning, it's more introducing the vocabulary in the, at the start, while also kind of uh, practicing listening of the, uh, of the targets. And then kind of, you know, activities and a little bit of drilling 
um, involved with the uh, with the um, the following uh, follow up activities as well as a listen and chant, right? And then continuing on, we have kind of the role play story. So now, like from here, the students learn the vocabulary. Now they can kind of practice it a little bit through the story. You can do role plays, and then some follow up activities as well in the book. So. Um, a lot of times teachers, you know, when I was a teacher, I'd kind of go through the book a bit quickly, depending on how long my classes were. And then, you know, you have that extra time, which is where the games come in. So obviously doing all the activities in the book will take up some time, but then we want to also kind of play some games with the students to reinforce. So kind of here. So the CLIL content in Let's Smile has its own single page instead of being the... Uh, being the review unit as it was in hand in hand and reviewing and linking all of the units together. And then the clue unit is our world link, which is basically the review unit for Let's Smile. So here we have arts and, arts and, crafts, uh, arts and crafts and uh, basically kind of presenting it, uh, you know, the students you know, outside, right? Okay. Okay, so I didn't want to spend too much time on the introduction, but you know, this is what we're going to be using as we go into the games, right? So, okay, pretty good. So, oh, kind of didn't wrap my uh, text here. So I'm going to go over different types of games and activities. I'm uh, going to go over warm up, give some speaking and listening ideas, uh, writing and reading as well. And I'm going to hopefully do them together. So for those that have just joined, um, I will be asking for some volunteers a bit later. So if you see the kind of raise your hand function in Zoom, um, just like in normal classes, if you wanna participate uh, when I ask for it, um, feel free to use that and raise your hand and uh, I will give you, the, uh, give you the opportunity to speak and give me some answers, all right? So I won't be doing that with all of them because it does take some time. Um, but so if, if we don't do it that way, um, feel free to utilize the chat, okay? So I am paying attention to the chat. So let's go over some warm-up activities, okay? So warm-up activities. So a few things uh, I want us to think about um, with warm-up activities. Um, they're a good way to kind of get to know and activate students' background knowledge. Um, it's always good to know what the students already know. Um, kind of gives you the opportunity to kind of refocus on what you're going to teach and what you want to emphasize with the students. And even, you know, an extra teaching opportunity for you to, you know, if one student knows, like say, one student knows the uh, fruit, uh, like cherry, they know cherry. If one student answers that, then that's like a teaching moment for you to teach the rest of the cl class what a cherry is. So it's kind of extending the vocabulary, extending the learning targets a bit as well, okay? And the way I think about warm-up activities, it gives the students the chance to kind of flip the switch, right? Um, so when I taught here, I taught six years in the Korean public, public school system. Um, when I did a warm-up in class, you know, we want it to be stress-free, something easy, and doesn't take up too much time usually. Um, I always thought of it as, you know, my students are, you know, kind of turning their brain into English, right? Because outside of class, you know, they, they're speaking a completely different language. All of their other subjects are all in Korean. So it's kind of hard to kind of expect them to, you know, sit down in their seats or as soon as you walk in for them to be able to speak English right away, right? We, don't ex we won't expect them to be too fluent or kind of bilingual by that point. So we're trying to help them to get to that. So especially with me speaking Korean sometimes, it takes a little bit for me to warm up, you know, speaking another language. For those of you that, you know, can speak English and, you know, your native language, sometimes we have to think about in the beginning when we learned these languages, you know, it wasn't as easy. So we kind of empathize with our students a little bit. Okay. All right. So the first game we have here, we have 20 questions. So it's kind of a simple, simple activity, right? So you can play in pairs. You can, you know, put them in groups or do it with a whole class. Uh, so basically you'll pick uh, one thing. So pick a noun. Um, 
So they can't, so the student that picks the word or if the, you, you, the teacher picks the word, you don't really give them hints. So the students will be asking questions as the, the game, game uh, suggests. So you ask the, so a few questions and then you can answer yes or no, or yeah, mostly it'll be yes or no answers, right? So you can do, you can, yeah, a few questions to help the guesser, yeah? So you can have these kind of scaffolded for the students if they need different questions and uh, just gets the students to, you know, practice speaking a little bit and you know, get uh, practice question and answer as well. So uh, we're going to do um, 20 questions. So, so some questions that uh, like if you're practicing with your students um, within a lesson, if they're learning, does it have or is it a, uh, you can have it that way. So I picked a few things, right? Uh, so I picked some things. And you guys are going to ask me questions. So this one, since it's 20 questions, we're just going to do this through the chat. For some other activities later, I'll, I'll do the uh, speaking part. So we'll just do it through the chat, okay? And I'm going to give a time limit. I'm going to see how long it'll take you guys. So, so some here, try to use does it have or is it a, okay? So... I'll have my, my timers up here on the top, okay? So when I say go, you guys can, in the chat, I'm looking at the chat to ask me questions, okay? So if you're ready, can you tell me ready in chat? And then I'll start the timer after a few seconds. Okay, thank you. You guys are ready, so is it a noun? Yes, it is a noun. Yeah, I think it would be too hard if it was like if I thought of some random adverb or something. So it is a noun. So ready? Hopefully my timer is going. So is it an animal? Yes, it is. Does it have four legs? Yes, it does. Is it big? Yes, it is. So that's three. I'm going to try to count. Can it fly? No, it can't. Is it a mammal? Yes, it is. So if your student said mammal, it might be, that might be something. Does this live in Africa? Yes. Does it have a tail? Yes, it does. Can it run? Yes, it can. Is it a giraffe? No, not giraffe. Oh, I think I just saw an answer here. Is it an elephant? Good. There were some people. Yes, it is. It is an elephant. Very good. <laughs> so some people, or somebody, a lot of people are thinking giraffe. So you could still get more. Do. Is it a dog? Very good. Okay. So now I'm going to get more difficult. Going to get more difficult. So we're going to do one more. Okay. So let's move on to my next slide. So elephant. And then you can, of course, repeat with your students and draw elephant, elephant. Or, you know, if another student got it correct, you can have them pick the next word. Um, if you do let the students pick the next word, so here's a kind of classroom management thing, make sure they tell you what the word is. So don't let them just think of a word and then go. Make sure they tell you what the word is and you know it. So when, you know, you're going through, you can kind of help the students a bit. All right, let's do one more, okay? Ready? And we're going. Okay. See, is it big? No, it's not. Is it an animal? No, it's not. Is it an object? Yes, it is. Is it domestic? Uh, can you eat it? Ooh, good question. No, you cannot. Is it in the classroom? No, it's not. Is it for transportation? No, it's not. Is it a toy? No. Is it used in the office? No. Do you use it every day? No. Well, maybe. Oh, it's a maybe. Is it easy to break with enough force? 
<laughs> is it used in the kitchen? No. So we're at 11. Do most people have it? Um, no, I don't, maybe. That's another maybe. It depends. Is it a car? No. Is it a cell phone? No. Is it used outside? Uh, yes and no. It's not clothing. Is it a PC? No. So it's not used inside. You use it though. So this one is a bit more difficult. No, it's not a car. It's not a piano. Is it a bike? No. Yeah, this one might have been a bit more difficult. Is it an umbrella? Asking all, got to ask more questions to kind of narrow it down. Is it where? Oh, time's up. It's in the garden. So with these, yeah, time's up. You all failed. <laughs> But usually, yeah, kind of what color is it? Uh, a lot of the good questions were, you know, where do you use it? Is it used at home? Is it used outside? Right? So try to get you. I could have given more hints, you know, but uh, wanted to challenge you a bit more. So I'm. it, it was a tennis racket. <laughs> well, I like tennis. So everyone having it, it was a little, a little yes or no. So... Uh, <laughs> You guys are, I could have, you know, with your students, obviously, you can kind of steer them into the direction, give them a little bit of hints. Um, yeah. Did someone say tennis racket? I didn't see. Yeah. Yeah, this game can also review vocabulary from previous lesson. Perfect. Yes. So, especially with warm-up activities, reviewing the previous lesson, always something you want to do as well, so you can utilize. Okay, let's do another one. So I like all the participation. You guys are great. Okay, so we have the next activity here called Give Me Five. Okay? So this one kind of simple. You give the students a category. They must think of five things for the given category. Right? So you can do different variations to, you know, obviously if your class has um, different levels of students, English levels, um, you can play it in groups. Um, I did a lot of group games. Because, you know, try to mix and match the level so kind of support each other. Uh, you can do it so each, each, um, each group has to come up with five things. But then instead of like a speed round, um, you compare what each group writes down or thinks together, right? Um, I would suggest if you do it that way that the students do write down the five things. So you have something to check. Because, um, yeah, if you just let them say it off the top of their head and one group goes first, they're going to change it right away, right? Um, otherwise, you can do it first student to think of five, okay? So give me five. All right, so this one I'm going to try. going to try. So if you want to give answers, um, you can raise your hand in there, and I'll try to connect, uh, connect your microphone. If it does take too long, if it does take too long, um, I might have to move on, so I'm sorry, okay? So just prepare for your microphone, okay? So I'm gonna lower everyone's hands down first until after um, I put the category, right? So usually, you know, if you had your students, you know, you put their hands on their head or like they have to put their hands on their desk, okay? So I'm gonna give the first category here and then first person I see to raise their hand. So get your clicker fingers ready. So I'm going to show in three, two, one. Oh, and first one. Countries in Africa. You can give me five. So it's okay if you don't want to raise your hand, if you want to write in chat, but write out five. So not one at a time. So type out all. So Ariane Hugo. So let me see. So you feel free to turn on your mic. Got the first person. So you are muted right now. So if you want to... Unmute. I'll give you a little bit, five seconds. Leave your mic set up. Okay, so I'm gonna have to move on. Okay, Juan.
Well, you guys are muted, so if you can <laughs> unmute. Okay, there we go. So can you give me five um, countries? Uh, Kenya. Kenya, good. Uh, Nizia. Good. Um, Afghanistan. Oh, Afghanistan is not in, uh, it's not in Africa. Morocco. Morocco, good, Morocco. Um, Tanzania. Tanzania, what Tanzania? Tanzania, oh, Tanzania, okay. Um, Ghana. And Ghana, okay, very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the five. So that is the countries in Africa, very good. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, very good. And we'll do one more through the chat. So this one here. So I'm gonna lower everyone's hands here. Lower. So we'll do one more. This one, dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs. Think of five dinosaurs. Who's watched uh, Jurassic World or Jurassic Park? Can think of the ones. Did we? Did I stump everyone? Some dinosaurs. We have T Rex. I see one in, in the chat. Ooh. Alejandra Delap Delapdocus. <laughs> Let's not make up our own uh, dinosaurs as well. <laughs> T-Rex, 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 T-Rex. Velociraptor, try, oh, here we go. Ariane, writing in. Brachiosaurus, Brontosaurus, Pterodactyl, T-Rex, and Stegosaurus. Very good. Stegosaurus, very good. So I wanted to kind of test you guys. Obviously, I wouldn't do these with my students unless the you know, science class. But I wanted to test you guys with your... Um, with your knowledge of dinosaurs. Stegosaurus, okay. So you can kind of vary it up. Land before time, oh goodness. That was when I was a little kid as well. All right, good, so that's, uh, that's, the, that's give me five, okay. So these ones we won't do, this, this activity we won't do together, but kind of just uh, letting you know kind of activity. We'll organize yourself. So you kind of give the students a criteria and they have to kind of organize themselves in order. Um, you can use groups um, if you have a big class, class size. Um, you can still kind of do this online through Zoom if you do breakout rooms. Um, put the students in the rooms that way, and then, you know, they have to kind of either write down their order or they have to talk it out, do it this way. Um, I did this kind of activity with my students uh, when I, we were learning, like, uh, the months and, like, birthdays. So I had the whole class, they had to, you know, made them speak in English. And uh, I timed each of my classes how fast they, how fast they, could, uh, they could put themselves in order. So um, they would have to ask, oh, when's your, when, either one student or they all kind of, when's your birthday? They'd have to say it in English and then they put themselves in order this way. Um, you can do it in height or, you know, different things. Okay, so organizing yourself, kind of a quick activity. Um, this one I like a lot. You can adapt it to anything. Um, I call this Think, Pair, Share. Um, for those that have been to some of my webinars before, I always bring this one up because I think it's a great activity and it kind of covers a lot of different things for you as teachers. Um, so you kind of make a worksheet. You'd have three boxes. Uh, one would be Think, one would be Pair, one would be Share. And uh, you can choose any topic, um, whatever you, you're using your course book for or whatever unit or lesson that you're um, doing with the students. And you give them kind of one minute to kind of write down some answers, right? So you give them the first minute and they'll work alone. And then the second minute, they'll work in a pair. And then the third minute, or actually you don't have to give it a minute, but um, after that second minute, you'd come together as a class and kind of talk about everyone's answers, right? So, so for example, here we're going to try with adjectives, okay? So there's different adjectives we've kind of been practicing in the unit and then give them kind of a worksheet, just kind of very simple. You can make this in, in, in PowerPoint. Um, so the first, first box you have by yourself then with a partner and as a class, right? 
And then you kind of give them an object. So it doesn't can be an image from the book. Like so, you can just do it straight from your book. So if we had you know those stories that we have in the in each of the course books, you can have them look at that and write down different things, or you can give them a different image, right? So obviously we can't do in pair work during the webinar, but we'll give one minute here. And in the chat, you guys write down any adjectives you see. Okay, so I have my timer again. So in three, two, one, what adjectives do you see in this picture? Beautiful, great, pretty, cute, ugly, beautiful, big, small, happy, thrilling, colorful, evil, huge, scary, heroic. So some of these words, like if you know, if you're going into an adjective, um, an adjective uh, lesson, you know, some of these words you can add on to some of the vocabulary since you know some students know them. Ugly, strong, magic. So you that'd be a teaching opportunity. Magical, magical would be the adjective. Magic is the noun. Enormous. And then if you wanted to steer in other directions, how about, you know, colors? What colors do you see? So it's very colorful. What colors do you see? Pink, yellow, brown, blue, various. <laughs> Red, brave, good. Okay. Crowded, white, colorful, cute. Okay, see all these things. So in on the... Um, on the worksheet, you'd write down the beginning, then say you'd give another minute, and the students would compare with each other, right? So they would keep compare each other's lists, and they could, um, you can do it two ways, how I kind of thought about it. Um, if they compare lists, student A would write down what they didn't write from student B, and then student B would do the same. So if my partner wrote down um, cute, beautiful, and ugly, and I didn't, I would write that down in my second box, right? And then at the end, kind of, we did kind of the third step here in the webinar, kind of come together as a class, and then we would say it together, or like say everything we wrote down. Um, some different variations, um, I didn't show it on here, but there's some different variations that you can do uh, with this activity. Um, uh, what I've shown before, uh, you can make a table, right? So you can make the table, let's say you're practicing adjectives. You would have all the adjectives on one side, uh, like a big list of adjectives written in their native language. So in Spanish, in Korean, in Japanese, you, in one column, you would have all of those words written in their uh, native language. But then the box on the right, the second column would be empty, okay? So you would give the students one minute, and they would fill in, okay? So what words do they know in English, right? So then they would take one minute and do that. And then with their partner, they would do another minute. So now instead of working by themselves, they're working with their partner and they're trying to fill out this table together. So by the time, you know, you give them two minutes, when you come together as a class, then you, you know, do it together as a class. You fill in the rest of the boxes. And that way the students, you know, then the students already have their kind of vocabulary worksheet, essentially, for that lesson as well. So as a teacher, this allows us to kind of figure out their background knowledge. What do they already know? And then, um, yeah, editing, you know, during the pair portion gives the opportunity for the students to teach each other, right? Giving that student-student uh, interaction, okay? So that's that. Okay, 30 minutes. So another one here, we have I spy. So another warm-up thing um, that you can do. Again, you can choose any kind of image. Um, this was, you know, when I was younger, they had all these, all the books, I spy books, and they give you a kind of a list of things to find. Um, so in this one, you can give questions, okay? So kind of similar um, to uh, Think, Pair, Share. So what animals do you see in this picture? So we have octopus, good, there's an octopus up here. Is there eight legs? More, seven, eight, yes. Spider, fly, frog, very good. Butterfly, spider, shark. So there's a reason why I went over, ladybug, fish, dinosaur. 
There's a reason why I picked dinosaur earlier. Do we know what kind of dinosaur this is? Land before time. Spike, his name was. Triceratops? No, not Triceratops. This is a Stegosaurus. <laughs> okay, so that's one question there. Bear, monkey, good. And then you can get some specific questions, so it doesn't have to be as open. What color is the crayon? Purple. Okay, very good. So here, how many fives do you see? How many fives do you see? There's many fives. More than one. More than three as well. And there's uh, room for uh, other ones. Can you find the key? Good. So that's a good example of another question. Can you find the key? So let's go over the fives. So we have one here, one. So one down here, two, three, over here, four, five. One is upside down here, six. Okay. I think there was more. Six. You can also use the, the dice here, seven. If you wanted to get really uh, intricate, the nickel is worth five. <laughs> so there's different things, okay? Then... One more question. What single letters do you see? You can go over. So you can see E, T, N. Okay. So you can adapt it to any level, right, of the students. So if you have kind of beginner learners, they're still kind of learning their phonics, you can still kind of do this activity with them as well, right? Okay. So next one here, catch the vocab. Uh, so this one, you can, if you're in class, you can do with um, flashcards. Um, this one, I have a kind of PPT adapted version that I used uh, when I was a teacher. Hopefully with the internet connections, they won't be too laggy, but um, uh, basically you'll have like the flashcards of the images of the vocabulary words, and then the students just follow the cards, right? And then they have to guess what the card is, okay? So for example, here in this, so we have, these are some uh, flashcards from book here. So we have crayon, we have book, we have table, and we have chair. Okay. So this one is hard, it might be hard. But uh, as a class, let's pick one word. Let's pick one word. So we're all going to be focusing on one of these. So can you guys pick one? We'll pick one. Grace, crayon. Okay. So we're going to follow the crayon. So in a second, basically what's going to happen is the card is going to get covered and then it's going to move around. So your job is to follow it, okay? And then tell me what number at the end, okay? So are you guys ready? Can I get it ready in the chat? Because this is, uh, you know, you have to pay attention, okay? Okay, ready? And let's go. Where is it? Say one more time if you want one more time. So that was kind of the warm up. Okay, so it's a you know, warm up. So one, one more, please. Okay, one more. We'll do one more. Okay. So now, now you know what to expect. So usually I don't expect my students, you know, the first time they see it, you know, like, oh, I didn't expect it to go that crazy. So now you, uh, you can kind of um, have the idea of how it's going to be. All right, so we're going to do this one more time. I'll count it down, right? So in three, two, one. Where is it? So we have four, a lot of people, a lot of fours. Three and fours. Okay, so let's look at number four. There is some two. See a two in there? Okay, see all the numbers. But I'm seeing an overwhelming amount of fours. So let's check number four. What's behind door number four? The book. Oh, no. <laughs> what else? So two is two. Roma, Trong, Gabriella, two. So number two, let's see behind door number two. 
the crayon. We found the crayon. And then, you know, you can give the students, you know, one point for that, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully, you know, you, if, if you got it wrong, you know, it's because of the internet connection, right? You know, it was, it, it was very hard to follow it because, you know, the activity, you know, it lagged a bit and, you know, it's okay. I understand, right? I understand <laughs> if you got it incorrect. And then you can always go. So I won't do too many. I have different uh, things here. So you can go up um, to different ones um, with this. Yeah, so this one, um, I found a template. Um, a slow connection would be great. Yeah, so I did find a template. Um, what I will do for this game in particular um, I will find the template for you guys, and it will be in the follow-up email, okay? So I'll put it in the follow-up email um, for you guys. So um, the follow-up email comes in a day after, uh, so tomorrow um, for Zoom. So just be on the lookout for that yeah, email, okay? And I'll put a link, a download link for, um, for this one, okay? So yeah, you can do it with six. And then you can go in here, and then um, you can do it go up to nine. Obviously, adapt it for whatever grade you're using, okay? So um, I wouldn't probably go up to nine with, uh, say, first graders or second graders. Um, I would probably stick to maybe six. Yeah, it will be in, I'll give you the actual PPT template for this, not the PDF, okay? Um, you can do a simple one, another one with this uh, called shuffle cups. So instead of using here, you can use cups to kind of do it around. Um, if you kind of remember those kind of street performers, it's like, oh, find the ball. And then you kind of do it that way. So you can, if you're back in class, that's another way you can adapt it outside of the PowerPoint. Okay? So you can do it extreme this way. I did have an extreme version that kind of went even more insane, but uh yeah, we'll kind of keep going here. Okay, so here we have another one called community members. Um, so it's good to practice superlatives and comparatives. So this is more of a specific um, activity um, for the students. Um, what I did, and this is a good way, especially for kind of the older learners that are kind of practicing, um, getting people and kind of comparing them. So, you know, for taking this lesson here uh, from uh, hand in hand. Then we have, you know, the deer is slower than the giraffe or, or the, oh, this is actually let's smile. The giraffe is faster than the deer, kind of doing like this. So they're practicing these kinds of sentences. So if we get actors, so famous people. So what I did with, I did it in groups. Um, what I would do, not on a slide, but on like a, maybe a word doc, get two people. So three is a bit kind of much, but give them two people, two things, and then I uh, give it to the group. And the students would have to try to write down as many sentences as they can, you know, given the information. So, is like, so they, you know, you can practice shorter, taller, tallest. They can do all those kinds of things. Yeah, Dwayne is taller than Robert. Good. Or the Rock is taller than Iron Man. You know, they can do it this way. Um, this is one way to, if we're talking about engaging the students, getting the students interested in class. Uh, so in Korea, I would use like some K-pop stars. You know, just Google, you know, their birthday and Google their height and then put it on their, um, put it on the sheet. And then they'd all, all always ask each other, oh, like, who did you get? Who did you get? No, no, I did this. Some students wanted to keep the paper because of the picture. <laughs> so you know, just finding out, you know, what the students are interested in as well. So this is kind of another teaching tip, finding what the students are interested in and then figuring out how you can incorporate it into the class, right? So you can do it this way, you know, short, you know, who is shorter, who is the shortest, okay? who has the best acting. So this is more opinionated, who has the better movies, right? Okay. So then another one, um, game called Boggle. Um, oh, this one here, I was going to use a website. So um, basically for Boggle, you give the students um, a bunch of letters and uh, the students would tried to think of as many words um, as possible they could use with the letters. Um, you can do a, a similar activity. Um, so an example here. Uh, so if I just did A here, R, T, art, 
G U B. So if I did it just like these, just six letters, you can ask the students, oh, what words can you make with these six letters, right? And then they would go through and think of all the words, right? Rat, bug, good, great. So kind of that kind of concept, as well as um, what you could do, uh, let's, this is just the first word I thought of in my head, personification. Personification. So you give them a long word. And, and then with these letters, what words can you make, right? So then kind of do it that way. Son, ion, person, okay? You can do a bunch of different things that way. Fiction, okay, very good. Oh, okay, I'm gonna keep going. A lot of questions here, okay. Do you have to use all the letters? Um, no, you don't have to. So if you were using personification, you know, you can make the small, small letters, small, uh, small words, short words. Um, I would uh, put the rule that it has to be longer than three letters. Um, so no at or is or and all that. So you can do it that way. Um, so we have here, uh, so this one's called odd one out. Um, so you kind of give, uh, give some words and then figure out what they have in common, okay? So it gives some different things here. So this is a little bit kind of being kind of like a riddle in a sense. So there's one word that these all have in common. So if you can kind of think about it. So number one, boxing, wedding, circus, ear, tea, soup, table, dessert, kitchen, tea, bath, Beach, green, light, wear, boat. So if you're putting the answers, put which number you're answering for. So let me see if you guys can figure this out. Number one, ring. Very good. Tim, you put spoon, and that is correct as well. Teaspoon, soup spoon, tablespoon, dessert spoon. Number three, kitchen, tea, bath, beach. Two meal. Mm -hmm. Meal could be in, but kind of a sink. Number three, towel. Good, Rhonda. <laughs> Kitchen towel, tea towel, bath towel, beach towel. And then number four. You can think of number four. Yoshiko, very good. House and Rhonda as well, both at the same time. House. Very good. So those were the answers, okay? Ring, spoon, towel, house, okay, very good. So kind of a simple activity here. So let's get into some speaking and listening activities. So here's kind of a specific one if you're practicing directions or um, places in the city. Um, so you can do a map, map activity with the students, so conversation practice. Or you can create your own city map or um, mall building or anything. And you can have the students uh, get in groups or pairs. So here, for example, you'd have a map, right? So we have cemetery, you know, bus station, college, all these kinds of things. Um, and then you would give the starting point for the student, right? You have the starting point of the student, and then they would have to ask a question, okay? But um, for each of, the, each of their worksheets, you kind of cover up different ones, and then you'd give them a list of where they're looking for. So what is, uh, what is empty here, student B has. So example here, we have the, so I have the question here, the elementary school. Where's the elementary school? So the elementary school is down here. So the student will ask, where's the elementary school? And then give directions. So go straight one block, turn right, go cross the river. <laughs> Go straight like three blocks, and it's on your left. And then the student on the student A would fill in their map. So it's kind of uh, kind of a kind of speaking speaking practice here. Okay. Uh, another one you can do listen and draw for listening activity. So it's hard to do some of these kind of specific. This is the only skill that we're going to practice. Because you know, a lot of times you're using multiple skills for a lot of these activities, right? So this one here, listen and draw. 
Um, this one would be good for practicing prepositions. Um, so if we were in person, I would be able to do this with everyone. I could still do it, um, but in the matter of time, <laughs> uh, kind of go through it. So you can kind of make a story. Um, you can find examples or create your own story. And then have the students draw, right? So they're just listening and then they're drawing the scene. So here's kind of my example of a, of a story. So as I walk towards my new house, so the students will draw a house. I look at the beautiful view in front of me. This is what I see. In the middle, there is a big house. The house has one door, kind of. They're listening to what you're saying, and then the students are kind of drawing it at the same time, right? Um, I think there's been other variations of this activity. Uh, if you wanted to have more fun, I, I remember seeing some where they kind of put the paper or a plate on their head, and they have to kind of draw kind of some basic shapes um, that way. So you can add a different element to it. So you can do it that way. And then some writing activities. Um, so this one, doing a class story. This might be a bit more for some higher level um, students. Um, if there's anyone teaching secondary, you can do a little bit of creative writing uh, exercise. So you can have the students, um, you know, so you, you get the beginning. You, know, you give the beginning prompt, essentially, of the story. Today, as I was walking to school, I found an envelope full of money. And then you'd give these to the students. And then student one, you know, each student would start their story. And then they would pass the paper after, say, like a minute. And then the student would read the, you know, above sentence, and then they would continue the story. And you can kind of have a, each have kind of different stories to it, right? So that's kind of a writing exercise. Uh, brain writing. So this is like a word association activity. Um, I'm going to oh, kind of spend a lot of time. Then. So you kind of give the, the students a worksheet like this and then kind of give the, they would, first student would write three words. Okay. So hot dogs, people, money. And then the following student, hamburgers, loud and cheap. So they would look at these first words and then they would think of their own words that they would associate with the above words, right? So people loud, <laughs> and then keep going through. So hamburgers, bread, loud motorcycles, cheap socks. And then the last student, motorcycles crowded, socks, underwear, bread, donuts, okay? Kind of do it that way. Uh, and I wanted to do this activity with you guys, but I think I'm running out of time. So kind of going through here. So I was gonna do this. These were gonna be my first three words, so travel, Nike, and light, and then kind of go through uh, what, what do you associate with the word travel, okay? What do you associate with the word Nike, okay? Just kind of go through it that way. So travel, hike, travel, shutdown, uh, sneakers, Nike, okay. and then, yeah, kind of going through. Yeah, very good, Rona. Airplanes, yeah, travel, enjoy. So sightseeing, comfortable, very good. And then reading activities. Okay, so some reading activities. So here, kind of have some speed reading. Um, so timed reading, essentially. So you can do kind of any stories here. You can get graded readers. Um, you can um, use the, the dialogue in the, uh, in the book um, to put in here. So basically, you'd give the students some time. and uh, they would have to write out or read out the stories and um, time how long it takes for them to read. Um, so example here. So this one I was going to do with you guys, um, you know, taking the Harry Potter book and uh, doing kind of giving you like 20 seconds to read it and then seeing how far. So you, they would count their words after 20 seconds and then kind of write in um, how much uh, they're doing, right? So. In 20 seconds, say the student did 40 words the first time, and then they would go again, do 85 words, and uh, keep going through, okay? So kind of short on time, so I'm going to kind of skip through here. You guys can review this again. I'll give you the uh, link for the, uh, for the presentation. And then reading feelings. So you can do um, kind of like a bit of model feeling, identify feelings in the story. Um, each student is going to kind of get uh, feelings um, for their uh, yeah 
so we'll get the feelings and then uh, read the passages of the feelings and then go this way. So and then the class, the, the class can kind of guess um, the ideas. So you, when you do the role play, you can give for each, um, for each role, the student can get a different feeling and kind of make the, uh, the role play a bit more fun and all that. So example here, so we have this kind of, kind of make these cards and then the students have to use the feelings as they go through, right? Go through here. So how can you adapt this to different groups? You know, you just put the students in groups for role play and then, um, especially if you have bigger classes, right? And then we have some TPR reading here. So TPR is total physical response. So getting some, you know, actions with the students. So if we're taking the kind of lyrics here from one of the chants, um, you can kind of write them out here and then kind of assign different uh, symbols, different symbols that go with, uh, with the, or that go on the, uh, the uh, sentences. And as you go through, oops, then as you go through, so now while they read it, they have to do the action. So instead of, hi, hey, Jake, they do, hey, Jake, so they clap, right? And then you can kind of do different levels. So they do multiple clap and jump, and then kind of going through um, everything there, right? So that's kind of another um, way to kind of get the students moving at the same time. And then have a simple dice game. So if you have a dice and a, and a worksheet, just getting the target sentences, a student rolls a dice, and then they, uh, if they roll a six, student reads the sentence, yes, please, roll a one, they read the sentence, and they kind of go through every round. Um, but the way I did it, I had a variation. So if the student here, what number did they not roll? What number did they not roll? Can you see which number? Five, good, so they didn't roll a five. So what, what does that mean? So not seven, so there's only six numbers on the dice. So they didn't roll a five, so what happens? They get subtracted, right? You subtract the five. So this way it kind of promotes the students to try to roll all of the numbers at least once instead of trying to roll a six every single time, okay? And then some things, so I'm not gonna have time to go through these, uh, I didn't plan to, but uh, I did put these resources in here for you guys to look at. Um, some of these, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of already, like Kahoot, it's quite popular if you're online. Um, these are some other links um, that you can look at once you get the presentation, which I'll put in the chat very soon. Um, Elo.org, if you wanna know how to make your own PPTs, um, like some of you had asked um, earlier, um, one of our guest uh, experts uh, webinars um, has this website for these kinds of uh, resources. So be sure to check that out. Uh, we also have his webinars where he kind of goes through all of the, the kind of programs and sites um, on our YouTube channel to watch. Um, so you can check those out for um, additional games and activities. Um, so just plugging in some other stuff for eFuture. Uh, we do have our website. So if you want some other kind of information about our books, you can find them there. Um, we do have some online digital resources, like I talked about, eSmart Class. Um, show you can have all the eBooks. Um, so there's some extra practice activities on there that you can utilize. Uh, please follow us on Facebook. Uh, we do put up all of our webinar um, webinar schedules and links on there, as well as some videos and everything. Um, Facebook. Uh, if you don't use use Facebook, we do have Instagram as well to post. Um, things on there for that, okay. Uh, the very big thing, there were some people that asked about the recording. YouTube, follow us on YouTube, subscribe. Um, we're very quick with our turnarounds for our YouTube channel or with our YouTube videos. So I'm sure my video from today will be up there quite soon. So, and if you wanna review from our previous uh, webinars and all of our other resources, we have all those available as well on our YouTube. Um, next month, so we do have our schedule ready for next month. Um, so we have uh, some phonics, uh, phonics webinar for school phonics. 
and comic readers, right? So if you guys are looking for readers um, to use with your students um, and are curious about using comics in the classroom, my colleague Sue will be going over that and kind of helping you guys with that, all right? Um, if you guys, for your certificates, let me check the time, perfect timing. Uh, for certificates, contact these wonderful people. Some of them are here with us today. Um, so if you have any questions uh, for the books, um, like you guys asked earlier, and to find your certificates, feel free to email these people here. And one last thing, we have a survey. So we do kind of take in um, all of your guys' feedback. Um, I look over them and we, you know, if you guys suggest webinar ideas and everything, um, we do take them into account. I do go over them and read everything that you guys uh, are writing to us. Uh, we do want to kind of make these webinars as beneficial as possible for you guys. Um, so please fill that out. Um, before you guys go, I'm going to link my, link my presentation for you guys to download. And that will be it. So I do see some questions in the Q&A box. Uh, what I will do, oh, hold on. It looks like some of the answers were here. I find such beautiful photos. Um, a lot of the photos I found were just, I Googled. And uh, breakout rooms, uh, kind of difficult. Yeah, no. with the breakout rooms, we kind of have to uh, have some trust with the students and, uh, and all that. So uh, unfortunately, so yeah, those were some of the questions um, you had. So there wasn't much else. Some were actually answers to my games. So let me link that to my presentation one more time. So you guys can download it from there and uh, check that all out. So that's all for me today. Uh, thank you guys so much for participating. I know I didn't get to have you guys speak and, and, uh, and uh, participate as much through voice, but I just had a lot of games prepared for you guys today. So uh, hopefully you, know, you aren't too upset about that. So uh, thank you guys so much uh, for today. Um, hope to see you guys at our webinars next month. And um, yeah, have a wonderful evening, afternoon, and uh, rest of your day. I'll link it one more time just in case uh, anybody missed it. So thank you guys so much. It will be put in the follow-up email as well. So uh, be sure to look for that tomorrow. Okay. So have a great day, everyone. And I'll see you next time.